Welcome to the Board Game Network. I'm going to be explaining how to play this game called Guildhall Fantasy Alliance. Now there's three games in this series. I've previously done a video on how to play Guildhall Fantasy Fellowship. And if you've watched that, this is exactly the same game, except for you've got some new professions. So you can actually mix these cards together if you want to, and you can mix the cards from all three games together if you want to. But I'm going to explain how to do this one, Guildhall Fantasy Alliance. And if you've watched the other one, you could probably skip forward to near the end where I tell you the new abilities for these uh, professions. You have six professions, and you have so you have a scion, an assassin, a marshal, a spellblade, a wizard, and a shaman. And each of those has five different colors. Here are your five colors: red, blue, yellow, and purple, and green. So you have victory point deck here that you shuffle and deal five face up. You deal nine cards to each player. This play plays two to four players. And your goal is to get all five colors in a single profession, and that's when you have a chapter, a completed chapter. And then when you get those completed chapters, you can trade them in for victory points. Your goal is to get to 20 victory points. First person to 20 is the winner. So you get dealt nine cards. And whoever the first player is, they, have, they are going to uh, look at their cards and they get to discard any number of cards they want and then and then draw back two nine cards in their hand. Then once they've done that they take three cards out of their hand and that's their starting guild hall. Um, so they are gonna pick they could be the same profession, they could be different professions, whatever you want. Uh, but they cannot be they cannot be any duplicates. Let's do that two assassins and a spell blade I'm gonna pick these up because these aren't supposed to be here And so here's my guild hall my starting guild hall. I now have six cards in my hand and If I take one of my actions to discard and draw I draw back to six So there's my starting guild hall every player does that and then the game begins and the way that you get two actions, so the, the choices you have are to play a card down in your action area, and whenever you play, you cannot play a duplicate of one you have in your guild hall. So I cannot play a blue assassin, not legal play, but I could play a spell blade, a purple spell blade. I've got a green one. And you can do uh, any two actions and you can repeat the same action twice you can do different actions that's fine except for the only limitation is if I play a spell blade on one action my second action can't be a spell blade so I could play a, an assassin for my second one is okay the second option for your actions is to discard any number of cards that you want to to the discard and then draw back to six cards. And you do have no hand size so you can, some cards let you draw extra cards so you can have more than six is fine but your your second option for actions is to discard and then draw back to six. Your third option is to, if you have a completed chapter out here, so let's say you have all five colors of the assassin, those get flipped over as soon as you complete all five colors and then they're no longer in the game. So you can once again play any color assassin because this all the assassins got flipped over so then I could come back and play that assassin that was a duplicate color before. But my, my other option for playing is trade these, this chapter in, discard it, and then I take one of these victory point cards that's out here. Now you'll notice this has a one at the top, a Roman numeral one, a Roman numeral two. So this is one chapter that I discard. This is actually if I save to get to two chapters, then I can get more points uh, with two chapters. Now you can only have a maximum of three chapters completed in your guild hall. If you go to four, you have to actually discard one of them, so you don't want to do that. And then, so whichever one you take, 
you're going to keep it. Now you'll notice that down at the bottom there's some things and so the higher point cards don't do things whereas the lower point cards have some special thing that they do. So then you would take that and that would count towards your victory points. So those are your three options. Now when you play cards there's icons down at the bottom and these icons have to do with how many of this profession you have in your guild hall. So at this point, I don't have anything over here. Let me draw some cards. Okay. A shaman. I got a purple shaman here and it's got a zero here. So I'm going to look at my guild hall and I have no shamans. So actually this ability I can use. I, using these abilities is always optional. Uh, you'll see it's got a zero, a two, and a four. So this means I have at least zero. This means I have at least two. This means I have at least four. Okay. So I can, if I want to, play a lower number ability if I want to. And usually it's the same ability. It just gets better and better between the different ones. The higher level is a better ability. But let's say I have four over here, but I want to use the two ability, that's fine, or the zero ability, that's fine. And these icons are referenced right here on the back of your manual to show you that if it's got this white castle, it's your guild hall. So it's something in your guild hall. If it's a black castle, it's something in somebody else's guild hall. If it's got a white hand, it means your hand. If it's a black hand, it means somebody else's hand. If it's a skull, it's a victory point token. So it's one of these tokens here. So you just get to take one usually or something like that. And that just adds just like this adds. So one point here is exactly identical to one point here. Uh, here's a crystal ball and that lets you look through or inspect, usually looking through the discard pile. There's a deck there that is the draw deck. There's a card, which is, just means a card. There's four cards in a row, which means a chapter. And it doesn't matter how many is in the chapter. It's a face-up chapter. So it could be one card in the chapter. It could be four cards in the chapter. Can't be five because immediately, once you've played the fifth, you flip it over. Uh, a four cards face down is a completed chapter. So that would be once they have been flipped over. Here is a cross, and that means the discard pile over here. A big A is an action, so that usually happens on one of these cards. Here, take an action and another action. So you, you get this one and you get two more actions. Uh, an arrow goes from one location to another. Two arrows facing back and forth is to swap between locations. And a plus means, and then you do something. So you did something, and then you do something else. So those are all your icons. And they also have reference cards here. So you have a spell blade reference card, a shaman. Let me look at the shaman reference card. So if you look at this and you don't really understand what this means, it's got a deck of cards, and you got three, and an arrow, and a hand. It tells you right here, draw cards from the deck, then place cards from your hand back on top of the deck. You may put back any cards in your hand, not just the ones you drew. You may place them in any order. So a zero here says draw three cards from the deck, place one card in your hand on top of the deck. So you draw to your deck and then any card from your hand at that point can be put, one card can be put back on top. So it's got the, the deck, the three, the arrow, the hand, one, and then the arrow back to the deck. So, if you ever run out of cards here, you shuffle the discard into the draw. So if you're digging through the discard, it's definitely to your advantage to get to that discard before it gets reshuffled because the, there's fewer options once it, it gets reshuffled, that deck gets bigger and bigger. And you do not have access to the discard. You Public knowledge is only that top card. You do not get to dig through here and see if there's something you want. 
You can never play duplicates out. So when you're playing to your action area, you cannot duplicate anything that's in your guild hall. There are several cards in this, in this game that let you um, give cards to another player, put other cards into their guild hall, and you cannot put duplicate cards into their guild hall. So that's not legal, so you have to give them cards that can actually go into their guild hall. Now some cards come off the top of the deck into their guild hall, and so if that's the case and the duplicate shows up, it's going to end up getting discarded and they're just out. Once you've flipped your guild hall over, then uh, that profession, then you can play duplicate cards down. It's not really duplicates at that point because those cards are considered out of the game, kind of. When you play two, to three, two or three players, there's some uh, victory point cards that you take out at the beginning. Just check your reference, uh, your, your setup. Now let me talk about the different professions in here. You've got one reference card for every profession and you've got a reference card telling you what the victory point abilities are down here. And these are different between the Alliance and the Fellowship. I can tell you that the Alliance game is more cutthroat than the Fellowship game. You are taking cards out of other people's guild halls more than what happens in Fellowship. That happens in Fellowship also, but not to the extent that it happens in the Alliance game. So if you play, if you want more of a friendly game, I'm going to suggest Fellowship. If you want more of a cutthroat game, play Alliance. Or, you know, for the free-for-all, get both and mix them together. Okay, we've got Shaman. And a Shaman, you draw cards from the deck, then place cards from your hand back on top of the deck. You may put back any cards in your hand, not just the ones you drew. You may place them in any order. Okay, so that's the basic ability for the Shaman, and then that progresses based on how many shamans are in your guild hall. Spellblade, swap cards in your hand with cards in another player's guild hall. Place the cards from the other player's guild hall into your hand, then take another action. So you're going to take some cards out of your hand, put them in somebody else's guild hall, take the ones from the guild hall, put them into your hand. The Scion, take a number of cards equal to the number of Scions you have in your guild hall from one other player's chapter and place them into your guild hall. Place the same number of cards from the top of the deck into your opponent's guild hall. So Scions, you're just, just going to have an X on them here. And this X is the number of Scions you already have in your guild hall. And then you're going to take that number from somebody else's guild hall, put them into your guild hall, and then flip the top card and give them back cards back to their guild hall. The Marshal, and that earns victory points. So the number one is you get one victory point token to your guild hall. So you just are going to, if there's one Marshal in your guild hall, one or two, you're just going to get a victory point token, put it into your guild hall. If you have three or more, you actually get two tokens to put into your guild hall. So Marshall help you get to your 20 victory points faster. Assassin, discard cards from your opponent's hand is what the Assassin does. The Wizard, place cards from the discard pile into your guild hall. You cannot place a duplicate card, which we already know. So it lets you dig through, actually the zero, you take the top card and put it in. The two, let you inspect and take one. The four let you inspect and take two cards and put them into your guild hall. So that's Guild Hall Fantasy Alliance to go along with Guild Hall Fantasy Fellowship. Make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network to learn how to play the latest games and some classics.